Okay, this is a part two of the tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a bark texture in Photoshop and possibly applying the bark texture onto the cylinder that we made in the last tutorial. Um, and so I guess we'll begin here. Oh, but before we start, also to to end, wrap up the end of the, the last tutorial, make sure that you chamfer right here just to make this look a little less jagged. Um, then select the entire model and go down and apply a mesh smooth. I mean, an auto smooth so that you don't uh, have such a jagged area to work with. Okay, and then we're going to go into Photoshop. I'll be using CS6, but I use older tools from uh, CS3 and CS5 and CS4 in case that you're using one of those versions of Photoshop. First, open up a new tab. Uh, I have one that's set to 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. That's usually what you want to go for in texture size. Make sure that they're even, um, whether it's uh, 256, 512, 1024, or the next step up, which is 2048 by 2048. Hit OK. Make sure it's transparent as well. Um, OK, so first off, you're going to want to select a very dark brown and a very light brown, like so. All right, then go to the filter tab, render, clouds, select the new layer, dump the light brown on top, make another new layer, move that below the first layer, and then you can use that as the, the dark clouds, okay? Um, you might even want to put the, uh, the clouds up, up here. Uh, then go into your, your layers tool um, where it says normal. And we're going to have to play around with the, uh, the layers tab. Uh, the multiply tool actually looks like it'll work pretty well. Then the very dark brown layer, um, you can move that up above that one. Play with that one as well. So you can get a more realistic bark looking texture. Pin light. So it's going to be a normal for the light layer, multiply, and then a pin light on top for the dark layer. Um, Okay, then for the next step, we're going to want to merge all of these together. Merge layers. Okay, then uh, go into the channels tool and create a new alpha channel. Um, you're going to want to go to filter, render, difference clouds. Uh, you're going to have to hit it a couple of times so that you get a dark area like this here. Uh, that is what's going to make it look like a bark texture. Go back into the layers tab, click on the, the layer that you have. Should be the only layer at this point. Then go to render lighting effects. Oh, wait, I think I actually forgot a step. Um, it's going to come out looking like rock if we don't do it. Just hit the cancel tab. Uh, let's see, go back to your alpha channel, filter, noise, add noise. Um, go to about a 3 or 4 percent, set the distribution to Gaussian, um, and then hit OK. Then uh, go to Edit, Fade, Add Noise, fade it by about half or so. Put it at about 50 percent, but I'm going to do 52. Uh, then go back to that tab and go to Filter, Render, Lighting Effects. Okay. And Make sure that you set the texture to the Alpha 1 tab. Um, then you're going to want to play with it a little bit here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to have to move these channels until you get the image looking kind of like what I have. It will all vary depending upon that, that uh, difference cloud layer that you had. But I'm going to go for a darker area. And then uh, hit the OK tab here. Um, you also have to pull the light out very, very far so that it covers the entire image. Um, okay, but then after that, you're going to go to Filter, Other, Offset. Offset the area. You're going to have like some lines here. Um, in CS6, they've got this tool. It's called the Content Aware Move Tool. You can pretty much select the area and then just drag it somewhere else and it'll copy the uh, the pixels from that area but in the older versions of Photoshop you don't have that so 
Uh, guess what you can do in the older versions is you can just use like the uh, the content aware spot healing tool and then just move those lines. Also, try to remove some of the dark areas too if you can. But Alright, so this is my bark texture. I know it may not really look like one, but uh, file save as. I like to save my textures as a a, a TIFF or a Targa, um, depending upon. Actually, I'll do a Targa. I'll just change it up to a, a 8 bits channel. File save as. Targa. Then uh, I'll just save it on my desktop for now. I'll call it a. Uh, more work. Um, we'll do 24 bits per pixel since it doesn't really have an alpha that we're going to be using on the model. Then uh, click the M button back in 3ds Max. Um, drag a new material. Well, I'll show you how to make the material too. As you forgot in the last tutorial. Drag a standard uh, material over to the editor over here. Then just drag it onto the texture and onto the model. Um, turn it on using the show shaded material in viewport. Uh, drag the diffuse over. Go to the bitmap. Then I'm gonna want to head down. Uh, let's see where my target is. Let's see more bark. All right there it is there. Then uh, you should be able to see it in the viewport. And just come over here and render it out, see what it looks like. It's not a bad bark texture. It's pretty, pretty decent. Okay. Then, but if you need to, in the uh, Open UV editor, I'll show you. I uh, I did this in a different version of this model, but uh, you may have to play with the. The, uh, the UV map. I, uh, I think if you relax it, it comes out pretty uh, pretty straight to how you might need it. But just in case it's, it's a bad unwrap, you might have to either widen it to make it the uh, the map here look a little bit better. But it comes out pretty good on mine, so I'll just leave it as is. Um, all right, then that's the second part of this tutorial. I'll upload the next one to show you how to make the branches and then possibly see if we can get them on the tree. Thanks for watching.